So firstly, I've ascertained that the engine isn't seized by turning the fan blade and the uh, crank is turning, so that's good news, the engine's not seized. Secondly, we just want to check what state the oil's in. And having dipped the oil, discovered it's white and full of water. So before we start this engine, we need to drain all this oil out, change the filter, and take out the sump strainer and clean the sump out um, and get rid of all this nastiness. So on this little grey Ferguson, we've got a sump plug under here. We'll have to take that right out. In a moment, you'll see straight to this oil. Water. Years and years of water have gone down the exhaust and into the engine. This lot needs to come out. So this is the oil pickup in the sump and this is what picks up the oil and pumps it around the engine. And I want to take this out because if you start an engine with this lot in it, it isn't going to do it a lot of good. So we're going to let that drain and we're going to get handed in a minute and start to get some of this horrible stuff out. And here's a congealed horrible oil. Worth taking the oil filter down just to see what condition that is and we can replace that at the same time. So whilst everything is draining and making a general mess everywhere, I'm going to take the spark plugs out and what we want to do is put some oil down these bores as the track hasn't run for so many years. It would be wise just to put some oil down the bores and we can spin the engine over them with all the spark plugs out and get some good upper cylinder lubrication. So I've got my oil gun here, oil can, and give it a couple of three pumps down there. Having spent the last 10 minutes cleaning the filter housing out, it's now nice and clean, ready for the new filter to go in. Don't forget though, that you do need to change the o-ring in the filter housing at the same time. So we're just finishing off tightening the filter up. This one's been particularly awkward, so I've put my filter wrench on it. And we'll just nip this one up nice and snug. Well, as you can see, the electrical system on this tractor is a little bit worse and worse. Whilst the oil was draining out earlier, I took the liberty to chop that off. Pointless having it there. Might as well start with new. And as we want to have a go at getting this tractor running um, in the quickest and easiest way possible, I've made a new wire from the starter motor, which we can flash across the battery in a minute to get it to go. I've also made a new earth wire up here and what we'll do, because it's uh, got a distributor on it and a coil, we're going to take a live wire through the ignition switch and put this up to the battery as well in a moment. But whilst we're over here, and we've still got the spark plugs out, it's a good time to get the distributor cap off and just check the condition of the points. So in here we've got your distributor with your rotor arm and this will want to come off and be cleaned. These points are furred up from being stood and they'll need to be cleaned in a minute. And we also want to look at the contacts inside the cap and clean those up as well. So just down here we've got our points and they're still a bit dirty, but as you can see we've got some light down here. And we just need to get these nice and clean. So when they open and close under the roan in a minute, and generate the spark, which sends off the signal to the coil, to the spark plugs. Just got some Henry cloth tape in here just to clean these points because they really are quite carboned up. So after another 10 minutes of cleaning we've finally got this suction gauze looking as it should and ready to refit into the sump. We've also spent a good amount of time cleaning all that gunk out the sump. That said what we may end up doing is putting some fresh oil in it, running it for half an hour to an hour and then draining it all out again just to get rid of those last little bits of congealed oil once the engine's warmed up, but we'll see when the thing runs and what it runs like. So we 
we spun the engine over just to get some lubrication around the uh, bores, um, but on doing so we found that the starter motor was tired and needed replacement. Luckily we had a new one on the shelf. Then we turned our attention to the carburetor and we drained some fresh fuel through it and then discovered that one of the petrol pipes had corroded through and we had to replace that as well prior to starting up. The last job we did just before starting was to refit the spark plugs, ignition leads and a new distributor gap. So now we've got it running, and it appears to be a good runner, it's got potential to go to the next step. Now the next steps I would take in um, continuing with this project would be to sort the wiring out so we can get it started off the gear stick as it used to be. Um, there's a fuel leak from the fuel tap which we want addressing. Um, it's quite a nice example, it's an early example with an aluminium bonnet. It's, um, it's got an awful lot of potential but we're very pleased that it runs as well as it's done. It's been sat outside for a good number of years and um, just shows with a little bit of care and a little bit of TLC that these things can be brought back to life. Mm -hmm.